Well, certainly uh, a lot of us have anyway. And in case you haven't heard by now, Nikon announced last week, and I commented then, the much anticipated, some might say overdue, Z63 mirrorless camera. With it, we've got the world's first, what's called a partially stacked CMOS sensor, 24, 0.5 megapixels, and I know that's not the 30 plus megapixels that some people wanted, and I'll touch on that later. And the awesome x 7 processor that brought so much power and function to the Z9 first, then the Z8 and ZF cameras. Now I'm no expert in such things, so I can only say that the sensor brings a lot of what powers the terrific performance of previous cameras like the Z9 and Z8, we don't get the dual stream technology with the Z63, but it looks like that sensor reads pretty damn fast. 1 20th of a second readout speed, 50 milliseconds. In brief, that combo offers advanced multi-subject detection focus inherited from those Nikon flagship models, extraordinary low light image quality and fast electronic shutter that's capable of continuous shooting up to 120 frames per second for stills. Bright high resolution wide color gamut EVF that works well even with fast frame rates. Video features that include 6K, 60P, internal RAW and full HD 240p capture. That's uh, 10 times slow motion. And I think that's uh, a first for these Nikon cameras. And pre-release, like we've seen with previous x 7 cameras up to 120 frames a second. Again, inherited from the higher end cameras. NEF RAW 14-bit with lossless high-efficiency star, uh, which I use 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, and high-efficiency options. JPEG, JPEG baseline compliant with fine approximately 1 to 4, normal approximately 1 to 8, or basic approximately 1 to 16 compression, size priority and optimal quality compression, available HIFE, and it sports fine approximately 1 to 4, normal approximately 1 to 8, or basic approximately 1 to 16 compression size, Priority and optimal quality compression available NEF, RAW, plus JPEG. Single photograph recorded in both NEF, RAW, and JPEG formats, NEF, RAW, plus HIFE. Single photograph recorded in both NEF, RAW, and HIFE formats. All those options written to either and or <laughs> CF Express Type B and or SD, UHS-2 in the second slot. And I've covered those options for both the um, Z8 and ZF, and I'll add an example or two above. The electronic viewfinder warrants mention, since there's a new one here, amazingly bright 4,000 nits. <laughs> so that's gonna be great uh, in both low light and high light. 1.27 centimeter, 0.5 inch, UXGA OLED electronic viewfinder, approximately 5,760K dots. A big bump there. Color balance auto and 19 level manual brightness controls supporting high frame rates again. So it's not quite the blackout free performance of say the Z9 and Z8, but light years ahead of the earlier Z6s. The viewfinder frame coverage is approximately 100% horizontal and 100% vertical. Now I noticed they use the term approximately, but I think that shows that it's gonna be pretty complete. The magnification approximately 0.8 times. The usual eye sensor that automatically switches between monitor and viewfinder displays the mechanical shutter and electronic shutter. It has both. That's not an electronic shutter completely like the Z8 and Z9, but mechanical shutter 1 8,000th and the electronic shutter up to 1 16,000th of a second. As far as shutter release modes, single frame, continuous L, continuous H, continuous high speed, extended high speed frame capture with pre-release capture and a self timer. The flash sync speed is up to 1 200th of a second, so not revolutionary by any means. <laughs> no, it's not global. But there's always HSS at 1 8,000th of a second, right? Now, the top continuous shooting speeds, 20 frames per second with RAW at full resolution, 30 frames per second with JPEG at full resolution, 60 frames per second with JPEG at full resolution, 120 frames per second with JPEG at 11 megapixels. Frame advance rates are of course dependent on other variables, but according to Nikon specs, continuous L is approximately 1 to 7 frames per second, continuous high speed approximately 8.1 frames per second. When using the electronic shutter and image quality settings other than NAF RAW and NAF RAW plus approximately 16 frames per second, continuous high speed extended 
that's approximately 14 frames per second with electronic shutter, approximately 20 frames per second. High speed frame capture plus C30, approximately 30 frames per second. High speed frame capture plus C60, approximately 60 frames per second. High speed frame capture plus C120, approximately 120 frames per second maximum frame advance rate. Continuous shooting options, continuous L, 1 to 7 frames per second, continuous H, 1 to 8.1 frames per second, up to 16 frames per second with electronic shutter. Continuous H extended, 1 to 14 frames per second, up to 20 with the electronic shutter. High speed frame capture plus C30, approximately 30 frames per second. High speed frame capture plus C60, approximately 60. <laughs> of course, frames per second, high speed frame capture, C120, you guessed it, 120 frames per second, maximum frame advance rate. Now, ISO sensitivity. We know this camera is, like its predecessors, a low light beast. And this camera boasts ISO 100 to 6400 in steps of one third. No, we don't get native 64. Too bad. But 1EV can also be set to approximately... Uh, uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, or 1 EV, ISO 50 equivalent, below ISO 100, or to approximately 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 1, or 1.7 EV, ISO 204,800 equivalent, above ISO 6400, auto ISO sensitivity control available. Note, says Nikon, ISO sensitivity is limited to 400 to 6400 when HLG is selected for the tone mode. Keep that in mind. Now the monitor size is 3.2 inches diagonal. The resolution is 2100 K dots. Now the camera dimensions, I'll talk a bit more about that later. Width, height, depth, 5.5 inches, 138.5 millimeters by four inches, 101.5 millimeters by three inches, 74 millimeters. Approximate weight is 23.7 ounces, 670 grams. So that's one point seven pounds, I think. Hi, Ray here. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on specs. I think that's a, a, enough of a deep dive since I'm late to the party <laughs> again. But I want to try to relate what this camera means to me and why I ordered one as soon as my local store opened on Monday morning. One thing that immediately sprang to mind, I can't wait to pair this camera with the Z 400 millimeter F 4.5 VRS. And since I often use teleconverters, both the 1.4 and 2 times, that means maximum aperture of 6.3 with a 1.4 and f9 with the 2 times. So that reminds me of something I said a year or so back in regards to the 600 and 800 millimeter f6.3 super telephoto lenses, that they are eminently usable, not to mention affordable lenses. My point was that with the advanced vibration reduction and low light performance of cameras like the Z9 and Z8, not to mention the advent of AI noise reduction, 6.3 is just fine for us folks that can't afford those uh, 2.8 and F4 beasts. Uh, with the low light performance of cameras like the ZF and now this incredible Z6 III. Well, we're looking at, as mentioned, minus 10 EV as Nikon says in photo mode using single servo AF, AFS at ISO 100 and a temperature of 20 degrees, 68 Fahrenheit with a 1.2 lens. But we also have that ISO sensitivity range of 100 to 64,000 with extended range up to high 1.7 equivalent to ISO 204,800. And from what I can gather, we have about a stop of improvement as far as the kind of noise that we can expect at higher ISOs, something that wouldn't be possible, all things considered, with a larger, higher megapixel sensor, right? And we have all that with the XSpeed 7 processor at work behind the scenes, <laughs> literally, and we have much improved focusing in low light situations. So now, more than ever, we have more latitude in situations where wider apertures are constrained by the lens or subject demands. Long live f6.3 or, or even 9. Nikon is really thinking of real world shooting demands and how they can give us what we need to get the job done in challenging environments and conditions. Again, the real world that pros and enthusiasts alike work in. It's really amazing what we have to work with today and how those technical advances free up 
our creativity. I gotta say again, to the art snobs, photography has always been a technical image-making field. And while you can get away with less, if you're determined and experienced, gear does matter. And this release gets the latest advances into the hands of more creators at this price point, $2,500 US. That's only $100 more than my guess in the announcement video. It's, I think, a tremendous achievement in line with competing cameras from Canon, like the um, EOS RS2 and Sony's A7 IV. Remember, Nikon came out swinging with the Z9 at a price point that signaled just how competitive Nikon could be. $5,499.95 US for that flagship camera beats all its competitors. Same thing with the Z8, which was another amazing camera packed with features from the Z9 for $3,999.95 US. Though you can pick one up right now for $3,496.95. Affiliate link <laughs> in the description. Now we have a camera, $1,000 less than the Z8, that, yeah, while well, it's not clocking as fast a readout, the Z8, after all, has a fully stacked sensor, the Z6 II can be called, I think, a mini Z8, without stretching things too much. It's amazing. And to that point, from what I've seen, uh, Jared Polin did the perfect test with the proverbial swinging baseball bat, and even the electronic shutter fared pretty well. Certainly a lot better than anything in its class. So I think it's safe to say, and we now have that uh, one sixteen thousandths of a second with the electronic shutter, and if, uh, if you need raw and 14 frames per second gets the job done, you're off to the races. Uh, where you won't get oval wheels. <laughs> now, I haven't had one in my hands, admittedly, but it's been reported, and I've corresponded with YouTube colleagues who've spent plenty of time with the camera, that this is a professional build. And some of you may recall that I passed on the ZFC, not because it was APS-C, ultimately, I have nothing against that, but I just didn't think the build met my demands. But I did like the rest of the camera and the retro look. I said, give me a ZFC in full frame and with a pro build at the same time. And Nikon gave us the ZF last September and I didn't hesitate. I love my ZF. I mean, the Z6 III has the same kind of weather sealing as say the Z8, rated to operate uh, down to minus 10 Celsius, 14 Fahrenheit. Then note, um, at one point on uh, one part of Nikon's website, there's a typo. It's minus 10 Celsius, not 10, which would be uh, 50 Fahrenheit. Anyway, we appreciate such things in Canada. And it's a mix of magnesium alloy and something called Cerebo, trademark, body, and it's built to withstand use in the field. Now, if you're wondering about the latter, according to the company, it's a carbon fiber reinforced resin for injection molding with a thermoplastic resin matrix, quote unquote. The brand name acronym stands for Save the Earth Revolutionary and Evolutionary Carbon. <laughs> now, this is the same material that we saw in the Z8 as well. So we get weight savings with robustness, quote, impact resistance with the equivalent body strength of magnesium. The flippy screen. Well, to be quite honest, I would have preferred the same kind of screen as on the Z8, Z9, though I have worked with this with my ZF and, well, I'll get used to it. Let's jump to the video specs. They're everything I'd hoped for and more. I actually thought my hopes were a little bit uh, too much to ask, but Nikon came through with, um, well, <laughs> flying colors. The Z6 III brings, or should I say inherits, NRAW up to 60p, ProRes RAW up to 30p. And the latter is what I've been hoping for in particular because I edit in Final Cut. And I can edit ProRes. In fact, ProRes is wonderful in Final Cut. This is a 6K camera. Again, that's a rumored spec that had me paying attention up to 60p, as I say. I'll get a bit more into that in a minute. 120p in 4K and 240p for 10 times slow motion output in HD 1080p. So there's a slew of video recording options, not to forget 4K in-camera time-lapse. That's something I rely on in my other Z cameras. Uh, no surprise to see it there. I'm presuming, though I'm not sure, uh, if we have HLG tone mode we can use there, like the Z8 and ZF. Of course, for time-lapse aficionados, there's always interval shooting. As important as they are, at the end of the day, these technical details are important only in so much as they contribute to our creativity. Let's never lose sight of that, <laughs> literally. So for me at least, the Z6 III is going to be a tool that helps me create. Its size and weight is a big factor. 
Uh, let's look at that again, only slightly bigger and heavier than my original Z6, uh, which weighs 675 grams, 1.49 pounds with battery. The autofocus, from what I can tell, is up to 20% faster than it was in the Z6 II, uh, though I didn't buy that camera. But my original Z6, I think it's safe to say, wasn't far behind, especially after, I think it was firmware 3.4. Anyway, this Z6 III is going to be up there with the Z9, Z8, and ZF, thanks again to the Xspeed 7 and this partially stacked CMOS sensor, as they call it. Here I should mention the 3D tracking system. Um, there, I mentioned it. That's not the highest priority uh, for the kind of work that I do, but I appreciate it when I need it. Great implementation. DSLR shooters <laughs> who are thinking of uh, finally changing will be very happy. Back to the video. At the risk of repeating myself, the 6K ProRes is really great. And 5.4K as well. Other people have said it, like my buddy Matt Irwin, that will often be enough, especially for YouTube, while still giving us a bit of leeway in editing to crop and pan, but with significant saving in computational demands and storage. That can lead to significant savings, actual dollar savings. So I can see myself taking this camera on location as either a second camera to the Z8 or as the main camera with the, let's say, ZF for the second angle in 4K. I'm going to be interested to see how all the different files match up as well. And depending on what I'm shooting, I've said before that flat profile is my go-to. Anyway, it's going to help me get my work done. I should add here that I found the ZF video matches up nicely with the Z9 and Z8 files. I'm talking mostly SDR. It's real easy to work with. Not to forget in regards to audio. I believe that we have better preamps now in this Z6 III, and we also have 24-bit audio, and we also have, this is awesome, the addition of a line in. The important point there is that I can use mics like my Rode NTG2 that I most often use in my studio, but also sometimes on my video rigs, and plug that XLR mic into the Tascam DR60D Mark II external recorder that I use, and then run that right into the camera. Awesome feature. That's something that people have been asking for as actually XLR into the cameras. Those are rather large, so I'm really quite impractical. Here's the way that Nikon has chosen to do it. And I think it's a great idea. Briefly, because it's new, and of course we haven't had a chance to play with it, the Z6 III will be compatible with flexible color tool that's coming to Nikon's NX Studio. And with that, we'll get color tools to create custom picture control, color modes, to install on the camera. Sort of profiles, I guess. Let there be cloud access. And there was. The Z6 III will be the first Nikon camera to use the Nikon imaging cloud service. So you'll be able to upload uh, and send onto other storage and social media services, Dropbox, etc. I think. And that could be really useful. But I'll leave it there, except to say that I'm really excited to get my hands on what I think will be yet another winner in the already incredible Nikon Z series cameras. Officially, Nikon says the camera will ship in July, uh, but I've heard some rumors that it'll be available by the end of this month. I can't wait anyway. Oh, and one other thing. Again, Small Rig have collaborated with Nikon to create a cage for the Z6 III, as they have for all the Z series cameras. And I have another coming soon uh, for one of the previous cameras. But do check out my existing rig videos. I have a full playlist. I hope to add a Z6 III rig video in the not too distant future. Okay. So if you found this video useful, please do give it the old thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. In the meantime, take care. Cheers. We'll see you later.